If you recently downloaded Windows 11, you may have noticed that the Enhanced Snipping Tool is now the default option. In this video, I'm going to show you all the features and functionality of the Enhanced Snipping Tool and also some of the default settings that you may want to change. We'll also cover the time delay, which comes in handy when you're trying to get a screen grab of pop-up menus and hover menus. Let's get started. Here we're creating a quick reference guide for employees so they have instructions on how to use some of the new features in Windows 11, like snap layouts. You can see the first step in the instructions are for the employees to hover over the Maximize button in their app and select a desired snap layout. But we want to include a snip here of a screen grab of what that looks like so we can show them what it looks like. In Windows 11, when you hover your mouse, over that Maximize button, you have different layouts that you can snap to, like a split screen or other layouts that you can choose based on the size of your monitor. So let's show employees what this looks like. To do that, I have a sample spreadsheet here that I'm going to use as my example to take a snip. The first thing I'm going to do is come down here to the bottom, click on Search, and type Snip. Or you can hit the Windows Shift and S keys as a shortcut. The snipping tool will appear, and we can select to open it. When the snipping tool opens, we can move it around if we need to, and then we can select our snipping mode. The default mode is rectangle mode where we can take our mouse and click and drag a square and we'll take a picture of the image that we select. The window mode will take a picture of your active window and it'll exclude the taskbar at the bottom of your screen. The full screen mode would include the full screen, including your taskbar. And then you have the freeform mode where you can actually draw with your mouse a section of your screen that you want to take a picture. I'm going to keep rectangle mode as my snipping mode. The next option is to select a time delay. It will default to no delay, which means as soon as you click the new button, the snipping tool will activate and you can grab your snip. But we know we want to snip a hover menu that takes a few seconds to hover over and have that menu pop up. So we're going to give ourselves about a five second delay. And now I'm going to click new and this will give me five seconds to come over to the maximize button over here and hover and have the snap layout appear. As soon as the five seconds is up, our snipping window is active. And here we have the option, if we did want to change the mode that we want to freeform, window, or full screen, we could. I'm going to keep it on rectangle. And I'm going to grab pretty much the top half of my screen here, just to show folks as an example. Now that I've made my snip, it's going to open up into an expanded or maximized view where I can maximize this window. Let's take a quick look at the features that we have here at the top. The first option we have here is the ballpoint pen. When we click the down arrow, we can see we have several different colors that we can choose from. We can also choose a thickness level of that pen. The black ballpoint pen is helpful if you have information on your snip that you want to cover up or redact. So in this example, I have several names on the spreadsheet that may not need to be included in this example. So I'm going to use my ballpoint pen to completely cover up those names. The next option is the highlighter. The highlighter has a couple of different colors that you can select as well as adjust the thickness. And the nice thing about the highlighter is that it stays translucent so that you can see what's underneath unlike the ballpoint pen, which would cover things up. We have the option of undoing what we just did, which is super helpful, but we also have the option to erase items. If we select the eraser and drop down, we have the option to erase all ink. That will erase everything that you may have drawn on the image. I don't want to do that, but I will activate the eraser and then I can drag my mouse over the area I want to erase. Now I'm going to come up and select my yellow highlighter. Once I have that selected, I can come over to the touch writing button and select that. If I have a touch screen, it allows me to draw directly on my image and it will use the yellow highlight since that's what I have selected. Now I'm going to highlight the maximize button over here. Now let's take a look at the image crop options. We can come up to the image crop button and then if we wanted to, we can grab any of these white areas in the corners or sides and crop in on the image. And when we're happy, we can click on the checkbox to apply our crop. Now, if for any reason we didn't like that crop, we can go right back into the crop area and expand it back out again and reapply that. 
Let's take a look at our settings that we have here in our snipping tool. Click on the three dot menu and click on settings. The only default setting that is set up is to auto copy to clipboard, but we do have some other options here that we definitely want to take a look at. We have the option to save snips. It'll ask us every time if we want to save a snip. We have that turned off for now, which I think is fine because I like to copy and paste my snips. So I don't necessarily save all of them as image files. The next setting is to have multiple windows so that each snip opens in a separate window. I like this feature, so I'm going to turn it on. This means that I can take multiple new snips and each new snip I take will open in a separate window. If I don't have this turned on, then every time I take a new snip, it'll replace what's on the snipping board. The next setting is whether or not we want to have an outline or a border around each snip. We can come over here to the drop down and we can adjust this. The default is a red color and we can change that. I'm going to select a black border and click OK and then we can adjust the thickness. This looks pretty good, so I'm going to turn this on. Now let's scroll back up, come over to the left hand top corner and click back. Now that the border has been added, if we want, we can actually save the snip as an image file. Come up here to the save button and we can name our snip. And then we can select a file type. We can select either a JPEG, a PNG, or a GIF. I'm going to select JPEG and click Save. You also have the option to share this image when you click on the Share button. A window pops up that allows you to easily email the SNP or share it with an app like OneNote. You can click outside to close that window. Let's go ahead and copy our SNP and go back to our quick reference guide. And I'm going to select the area where I want to insert the SNP. I'm going to backspace. I'm going to hit enter backspace so that it takes the numbering back. And then I'm going to right click and paste. This pastes the copied image into the document very quickly and easily. Now we pasted this from our copy in the snipping tool, but we also saved this as an image file as well. So let's go ahead and delete this and I'll show you how you would insert that image file in case you would prefer that method over copying from the snipping tool. We would come up to insert pictures from this device. We'll navigate to where we have the image file saved, select it and click insert. And there we have it. Be sure and check out my other videos on Windows 11, including what's new, how to install it, how to fix some of your settings, as well as some privacy settings that you should definitely review. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to like it. You can subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Be sure to visit my website, SharonSmithHR.com. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.